Shalom, shalom to the nation of Israel. Before we get started, all praises, honor, glory to Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shai. By Hashem, Rukhaha Kodash. Double honors to the elders, the apostles, the brothers, the men at Great Millstone that rule well, that taught me this truth. To the hopeful elect out there, scattered abroad, unlike it to a speckled bird, tabernacle of King David, 144,000 mighty men. Peace, blessings, salutations, and to the remnant, men, women, children, shalom, right? Ha! <laughs> so this your brother Shopper, man. So now, just think about this. You go to Bible study, you ask a pastor a question, and he kick you out. You get kicked out. Not right then and there on the spot. They send you a letter in the mail and tell you, you can't come back to church. Come back to Bible study. It's Bible study. Where are you supposed to be asking questions at? You can't ask no questions on Sunday during the sermon, right? This is when you're supposed to be able to ask the questions, right? Because the, the, the Lord not dealing with them, man. Matter of fact, let's get that one first before we even start. <laughs> the Lord not dealing with these churches, man. The Lord is not dealing with them churches. The truth ain't in the churches. And that's why you get kicked out for asking a damn question. <laughs> the Lord is not dealing with them places, man. Them haunted houses. Acts 4, 7 and 48. How be it the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands as saith the prophet. Yeah, man. Yeah. The church, they, they got it to where the church is. The church, the church, the, the church ain't shit, man. The church ain't shit, man. For 20 plus years. I had a great revel a relationship with my church. I was very active and developed many great friendships. As the years passed, however, I began to question things to the point where I decided I was no longer okay with blind faith. Yeah, because they're not giving... Christianity is the precept of men, man. It's, it's, it's a false doctrine, a false way. It's a, do a dogma, a stronghold that's set up, and it represents religion, man. When people think of religion, they think of Christianity. The Bible, they think of Christianity. Christianity is a lie. Uh, the, um, the fact that Israelites, the whole premise of Christianity is that the Lord, that the whole nation of Israel turned their back on the Lord, which is stupid because you have a Bible that was written by Israelites. But they saying that the, the whole nation of Israel turned their back on Yahweh and Yahweh shot. And because they did that, now it's open up to all of the all of the other nations. Which is stupid. Which is stupid. Which is stupid. All the laws, everything was set up, was given to Israel, period, man. Period. But let's continue, right? The church had a group called Bagels and Bibles designed to allow group members to ask any question. And faith-related questions in a casual, relaxed atmosphere. That's why I didn't understand reading this. I was like, damn, he, is, he just, you know. <laughs> it was run by one of the church ministers and met weekly after Sunday service. But I had no interest in it other the years I, over the years, I'd attended multiple Bible groups and felt no need to attend another because you're not learning nothing. You're not learning nothing. Praise the Lord, you could be wicked, sing some songs, pass the collection plate, amen. That's it. I was also skeptical about how many, how open any ministers would really be to any questions that question biblical scripture. Well, you, they sound like they wicked anyway. They sound, they sound wicked anyway. But being inquisitive and asking questions, that's not a, a bad thing. That's what you're supposed to do. Be like the church of Berea, man. But then also when you ask a question, you still supposed to go and search it out. Let's get that. Let's get that. It's it's also in Acts. It's Acts 17 and 9, right? Acts 17 and 9. Is it Acts 17 and 9? Yeah, there you go, 10. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. So you ask the question, 
you got to hear what you got to be willing to shut your mouth and hear what the what the um the person teaching is really going to say too. So you can't be asking questions and then oh well I don't believe it so I'm going to ask another question. You you in the wrong spirit. And that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Yeah, so that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to ask questions and then when you get an answer, you're supposed to go search the scriptures. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, moments later, I found myself surrounded by smiling, friendly people munching on bagels and enjoying coffee. Well, maybe this won't be so bad, I thought to myself. Then the minister asked folks to be seated and open with a prayer and scripture reading. Since it was Christmas, his reading, that's pagan right there. That's not scriptural. That's not biblical. Christmas. That's, that's, not, that's, not, that's not in the scriptures. Since it was Christmas, his reading referenced the passage where the shepherd was visited by the heavenly angel to announce the coming of the birth of Yahweh Shah, of anointed, right? Coincidentally, that week I just watched the History Channel special discussing the birth of, of Yahweh Shai as told in scriptures. It included perspectives from biblical scholars, anthropologists, and historians who all questioned the factual validity of the related scripture, including the one the Bagels and Bible minister had just read unto us. How you got a Bible scholar, though? How you got a Bible scholar that's questioning the validity, the actual validity of the related script? That's why the people is fucking, is, is fed up with church, because church is a, a big-ass circle of bullshit, man. Just seeing the elder put up a pit, uh, a po uh, um, video or the pastor talking about how he stand with women's rights and their choice and this and this and that. And in the audience, you know all the women was up clapping and all that. Yeah, that's right. We should be able to delete babies. We should be able to have all the abortions we want to have whenever we want to have. And then the simps clapping too. And it's in church. What madness, man. Madness, man. Even though the scriptures say, thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not kill. Oh, but oh, that's not a person yet. Yeah, okay, whatever. After his reading, <laughs> the bagels and Bibles minister invited questions, but no one raised a hand. After a moment, he asked again, really? No one has a question? Again, no one raised not one hand, which seemed odd, considering the whole point of the group. Since the minister seemed seemed disappointed i raised my hand and was quickly called on regarding the scripture you you just read about the shepherd and the angel is it true yes it's a simple question yeah it's it's true we could go we could read you everything that go that go on in the scriptures it, we can't make you believe only the lord can make you believe it's a simple question yes what happened next was almost comical. The minister froze with the deer in the headlights look on his face. It was almost as if someone had suddenly kicked him in the nuts. <laughs> Realizing that my question had apparently caused some short circuit in the minister's brain, I attempted to quickly re 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 remedy the situation by explaining my question. I was wondering... About that because I just watched the History Channel show and yada, yada, yada. At which point the minister was finally able to breathe again and muster a response. Well, to answer that, well, to answer that, I guess you just have to ask yourself what is truth. That's not no answer. That's not no answer. That's, 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 that's moving the goalposts, man. <laughs> Huh? What the f does that mean? I thought to myself, now was the, now I now was the one. I was the one who was tongue tied, not knowing how to respond. I didn't. The minister said nothing further, and no one in the group uttered a word. For the next thirty seconds, you could hear a pin drop. I truly had no idea what he meant, and in retrospect, wish I'd asked him. Wish I'd asked him. Had I, it probably would have opened the door for the kind of thought-provoking discussion the group was promoting as. No, it wasn't. 
I can't recall much of what happened after that, but what I do recall is that the people who seemed so friendly at the start of the meeting didn't seem quite as friendly at the end because you challenged the damn the liar up there, and they just blindly following. I left the group regretting that I had all allowed myself to be convinced to attend. Yeah, it was just a waste of your damn time. You knew that from the beginning. A month later, look, this the part. A month later, I received a surprising letter from the church on church letterhead written by a senior minister after telling me that a valued member of the church, telling me what a valued member of the church I was, it then requested that I not attend any more bagels and Bibles. The minister justified the request by informing me that the group was intended only for the church young adults under 40 yeah so they could you won't question and you just going to blindly swallow the shit he's shoveling up there i was 47 despite my initial shock the letter struck me as as laughable on multiple levels which first was the idea that the church would have an age restriction on a biblical discussion group then to be informally told not to to be formally told on a letterhead, church letterhead, not to attend a group that I had absolutely no desire to attend, that was very laughable. laughable. What wasn't laughable was that they sent a letter presuming to know my age to use as justification to exclude me from a Bible group. Yeah. With with that... Salakia so about that, Israel. Salakia so had to take a call real quick. But so back to it. So with that said, I was well aware of what triggered the letter. And I knew it had nothing to do with my age. For that reason, it only further exposed the faults, hypocrisy, <laughs> intolerance, etc. That I was seeing in my church and more broadly. In religion, whether triggered by my age or my question, the letter certainly didn't support the church's repeated claims of being inclusive, open-minded, and non-judgmental. See, that's why you, you with all this strange doctrines and lies and shit, and people that, that it, it exposes you. When you start the lying and changing up things, you gotta keep lying. It's hard to maintain a lie, man. Christianity is a lie. That's why the people are fleeing the church. So I soon learned that what I experience is not unique. And it's a reason why church attendance in America has dropped so dramatically. If if you're curious to know more about it, this award-winning documentary documentary go does a good job of explaining. Yeah, he did it, did this, and then it says this guy is a John Follis is a war-winning writer whose writings has appeared in New York Times, U.S. Today, Time, and Mirror on America, a pop culture anthology including essays from Stephen King, etc., etc. So this ain't no just no guy that this this a guy that you know kind of got a little little sense, I guess. <laughs> but the truth ain't in the church, man. Let's get a couple of scriptures. Like I said, this ain't got to be too long. This do not have to be too long. Let's get this one started out here. Matthew 5, the churches. But to be, I mean, think about it, y'all. To be kicked out of Bible study because you asked the question on the Bible. I can see if he got up and said, yo, how do you feel about chicks twerking and, and, um, and stuff? Or how do you feel about gangster rap music? He asked a biblical question. I think it was one in here. Maybe, maybe not. It's a locket. I don't think it was that. I think it was Matthew 10 and 18. It's a locket, 10 and 18. Let's get that one. Matthew chapter 10 and 18. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils. And they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Yeah, so you got to be ready 
<laughs> you got to be ready. If you calling yourself a man of the law, you got to be ready. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in the same hour what ye shall speak. Yeah. For it is not ye that speak. But the Holy Spirit, the Rakakwadash, the Spirit of the Father, would speak of in you. Yeah, man. But uh, of uh, apparently, he didn't have no spirit in him. He didn't have no spirit in him. He didn't have no spirit in him. This one just came in my head. He didn't have no spirit in him. That's why he couldn't give an answer. That what is truth. <laughs> Isaiah 8 and 20 to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Yeah, no light in them. Man, ask you a simple, is it true? Yeah. Look, look, is it true, brother? Is that what you just read? True, brother shopper? Well, let's see what this say. <laughs> For what if some did not believe? Is it true? Well, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? Yahweh forbid. Yea, let, let the Most High be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Yeah. So, all I could do is read through the scriptures, break it down properly. If you don't believe, it's not me that's making you not believe. It's the Lord that blinded you. It's the Lord that blinded you. Not me. 2 Corinthians 4 and 3. Two. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling, nor handling the word of the most high deceitfully. Is that true? What is truth? <laughs> but by manifestation of the truth, condemning ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of the most high. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Ain't it? It's nothing about the Christian doctrine that's hid, man. This shit is right out there open for the world to see. And it ain't nothing there. It's bullshit. It got air holes in it. In whom the power of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Least the light of the glorious gospel of anointed. Who is the image of the most high? Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shai should shine unto them. Yeah. You just got to open, open the scriptures and cut for we preach not ourselves. For we preach not ourselves, but Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, the Lord, and our servants for, and, and ourselves, your servants, for Yahweh Shai's sake. Yeah. We not, all you got to do is open up the scriptures. They ask you a question, find, find the scripture and give them the scripture. Find a scripture, give them the answer, and, and leave it at that. It's, it's all you could do. Everybody not going to get it anyway. And you ain't going to get no truth in the church, man. When they kicking you out for asking a question, that's crazy, man. That is crazy, man. That is crazy. 1 Peter 3 and 15. But sanctify the Lord power in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that ask her, ask her you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. 1 Peter 3 and 15, once again. But sanctify the Lord power in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Is that true? What is truth? <laughs> what? Is, is that true? What is truth? Go into it. Break it down. Explain to him the scripture you just read. Crazy. Crazy. 
Two more. Two more. Let's get this one. Colossians 4 and 6. All right, two more. This is, like I said, this ain't got to be too long. Crazy, though. Get kicked out of Bible study for asking a question. Let's go three. With all praying also for us that the Most High would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Hamashiach in which I am also in bonds. To speak the mystery. So somebody asks you a question and you call yourself a man of the Lord, a minister. You teaching the Bible. You got a Bible class teaching the Bible. Bible school. And a head asks you a question and you have a meltdown and ban them from coming back to the Bible study. That I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. Walk in wisdom, not sarcasm, toward them that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Yeah. And you, ain't, you ain't getting... Man, that's I, I was talking, man. When I, you know, the the phone call I was talking about, where it was, she she was like, "Well, what you doing a lesson on?" And I was like explaining what happened. She was like, "Wow, Bible school." Yeah. Salaki, Salaki, Ezra, Salaki. But, um, yeah, so she was, like, going, um, she was going, she was saying, like, so, what, Bible school, Bible study? I'm like, yeah, Bible study. Get kicked out for answering a question. But then you think about it, hey, ap the apostles, every brother that's out there teaching, what do we end up dealing with all day? Every, when, any, when time, any time somebody come up, what are you dealing with? You're answering questions. You're answering questions. And ultimately, it's, it's faith. It's faith. But still, you still got to be ready to give them an answer. Come on, man. What is truth? <laughs> what they going to do with that? <laughs> what is truth? What is truth? Let's go. Psalms 119 and 44. So shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. Yes, so you got to be ready. If you calling yourself teaching the law, teaching the scriptures, you got to be ready to, 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 to give answers. You got to be ready to stand firm. The church is not that. The church is, they don't want you to, as soon as you ask them one or two questions, you going to pretty much blow their gasket. And they, they, you know, we just got the demon. And get rid of you. I seen a brother. I forget the name. The brother did a um, thing. Today I just watched it. Jehovah Witnesses came up to his, his door. And so when they came up to his door... After he started hitting them with scriptures, hitting them with scriptures, they got up out of there. They don't want it. They want you to just be like, oh, for real? Oh, word? Oh, 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 wow. You you really know the scriptures. That's what they that's what they want, man. That's what they want. Look, Luke 21 and 14. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain, stay, or resist. The Lord going, the Lord got you. Even if you didn't know, you know, don't wing it. You can't be up there winging it if you don't know. You can't wing it. But maybe you don't watch the lesson of this or this or that and you didn't really refresh your memory. So the, the knowledge is in your head. So then now they ask you a question that you might then wasn't prepared for or whatever. So if you don't know, hey, I got to check into that, this and this and that, or I get back to you or whatever, or Lord willing, I do a lesson uh, and, and you check my YouTube page out later on, I do a lesson on the breakdown. But if the knowledge is in there, 
most likely when they ask you a question, you're going you gonna to think about the scripture. Even if you can't go, oh, well, it may, maybe you might have to look it up. Oh, okay, this this will answer that question right there. But you can't kick a head out for asking a question. You ban a head? You ban a head from Bible class because they asked a question? <laughs> that picture is funny, too. <laughs> so with that one, man, we're going to close out. All praises, honor, glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rukahakwadash, double honors to the elders, the apostles, the brothers, the men at Great Millstone that rule well, that taught me this truth. To the hopeful elect out there, scattered abroad, unlike to a speckled bird, tabernacle of King David, 144,000 mighty men, peace. Blessings, salutations, keep pushing this word daily, man, as often as you can. Quam Yasharala and a Baba Baba. Rock a thumb, family. Shalom.